Welcome to all of you who are joining us on Facebook and on the website this morning. We are back holding live services and there's about 20 of us here enjoying worshiping together. But it's, glad, it's good to have all of you that are joining us by Facebook and the website to be with us also now. Wanted to wait and make the announcements. We continue with our Bible study from Sue Edwards in this week's chapter. Lesson 5, Strengthen the Sacred Mix, 1 Peter 3, 1 through 7. I've enjoyed preparing this study, and uh, I believe all the lessons are still up. If you haven't had a chance to participate before, you can go back and do some of the lessons and uh, uh, just enjoy doing the Bible study together. It's been worthwhile. Also, Tracy mentioned the video and uh, I would invite you, if you haven't had the chance to watch it yet, there is uh, posted on Facebook and the website for the church an article uh, that asks the question, does Pentecost reverse Babel? And the author's answer, and I believe my answer to that, no, it doesn't reverse it, it overcomes it. It's a very well-written, a very thoughtful article and I will mention Babel slightly this morning, but uh, review that article and I believe it will be beneficial to you. Um, also, for those of you who are here, we will uh, have communion next week and we are figuring out a safe and effective way to do that so that we can all participate. And also, we are not passing the plate for the offering there is an offering plate at the back, so if you would like to uh, give gifts to the church and present your tithes and offerings, you can just leave your gift in the back. And I see Paige is here now. Do you have any news on Penny Crusade? Are we still? I don't even talk about it. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. We're, we're still about. collecting. I guess. I don't okay. remember where we left off. I don't. I guess I'm going to have one Sunday. Which week we were on. We only had one Sunday. Okay, we'll keep collecting for a while longer. Uh, does anyone else have any other announcements that need to be made? If not, let's continue with our service. Acts 2, 1 through 24, and 31 through 36, the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Why? Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Kadoshe, uh, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya and Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them in our own tongues, speaking of the mighty deeds of God. And they all continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others were mocking and saying, they're full of sweet wine. But Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men 
are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what is spoken through the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will grant wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know. This man, delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross on the hands of godless men and put him to death. But God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. He looked ahead and spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, the Christ, that he was neither abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer decay. This Jesus, God, raised up again to whom we, all are, we are all witness. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this which you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended into heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus, whom you crucified. These are the words of God. Thank you, God. Pentecost Sunday. Promise is kept. Prophecies fulfilled and spirit filled. Welcome back to those who are here and worshiping with us. And for those who are at home, hope to see you soon. Today is Pentecost Sunday, literally the 50th day in Greek. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, which in turn signifies the birth of the church. And it was impressed upon me this was a good Sunday for us to get back together on the birth of the church. Some background information. Pentecost is the Greek name for the Jewish Harvest Festival, sometimes called the Feast of Weeks or the Festival of Weeks, are also given the Jewish name Shabbat, S-H-A-V-O-U-T, Shabbat. Uh, it originally commemorated, commemorated the giving of the Ten Commandments. This is what the feast was all about. And it came to be a feast of the celebration of the early grain harvest, approximately seven weeks after Easter. And so seven weeks after the end of Passover for the Jewish people. It was celebrated on the 50th day from the end of Passover. And even before it became a Christian holiday, celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church, it became known in the early church or in the early Jewish community, also known as Pentecost. And later on, after the day of Pentecost, it became known as Pentecost 
in the Christian church. Notice the symmetry between Passover and Easter, 50 days, between Shabbat and the day of Pentecost, 50 days. Is it a coincidence or is it God's planning? I believe it's the latter. Of course it's God's planning. And we will see the significance to this a little later. First, three things I want to mention to you. And those things are that the day of Pentecost accomplishes three things. The first is that Jesus keeps his promises. Jesus made many claims and he fulfilled them all during his lifetime. And he made a promise at the ascension and just before in talking to the disciples that just prior to him leaving that he would send the Spirit. Let's look at a couple of scriptures in John and then Luke and Acts. John, the 14th chapter, verses 16 and 17. And Jesus was talking to the disciples, and he says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, or comforter, or some translations say advocate. But he will give you another helper, and that is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you, believers, know him because he abides with you and he will be with you. And just over a couple of chapters, in John the 16th chapter, the Holy Spirit is promised and Jesus says these words, but now I am going to him who sent me and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things, sorrow has filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper or the comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, concerning sin, because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you no longer see me and concerning judgment because the ruler of this world has been judged. And two other passage, the passages that show uh, that Jesus kept the promise that he made. Luke chapter 24 verse 49 and Jesus says to them, and behold I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you but you are to stay in the city, which they did, until you were clothed with power from on high. And that happened at the day of Pentecost. And finally, in Acts, the first chapter, we see the ascension just after this, but Acts 1.5, uh, Jesus says, you have heard of me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And lo and behold, ten days later, we celebrated Ascension Sunday last week, and it was last Thursday. Ten days later, um, it happens. But Jesus says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. Uh, what we are tasked with is to be witnesses and we have the power from on high, the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. So the first thing we see about Pentecost is that Jesus keeps his promises. The second thing we see about Pentecost is that prophecies are fulfilled. Uh, if we skip down in Acts chapter 2 ways, we'll come back in a moment to the early part of the chapter. But if you skip down to verses 12, 13, and 14, 
we'll see this about Peter. Peter was ready to preach his first sermon since Jesus went away. Peter is now, we might say, the lead guy, and he's ready to preach about the Lord Jesus Christ. But sometimes the way I feel when Sarah has an effective children's sermon, how do you follow that? And Peter's probably asking himself at this point, how do I follow this, what's going on? And we'll go back to it. And we see in verse 12, and they all continued in amazement and perplexity, saying, what does this mean? And in verse 13, others were saying and mocking, they were having a big laugh about all of this, and they said, they're drunk, they're full of sweet wine. So Peter responds, Peter the scripture says Peter taking his stand he was now ready to speak and Peter with the other 11 uh, raised his voice and declared to them men of Judea uh, what you see has been prophesied these men aren't drunk for it's only the third hour of the day 9 in the morning Jewish time started at 6 a.m. so it's only 9 in the morning why would these guys be drunk at nine in the morning? So he says it's not that they are drunk with wine, but this was what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And it's quoted here in Acts. I'm going to read Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to you. And it says approximately the same thing, but from Joel the prophet, it will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. I think I'm long past the dream stage. Even on your male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will display wonders in the sky and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke, and the sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, where there will be those who escape, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. And so Peter is quoting the prophet Joel and he's saying this isn't a case of people being drunk but rather it's a prophecy fulfilled Peter's a smart guy he knew how to get their attention and we'll see that this was the first part of their sermon of his sermon and to get their attention he alludes back to the prophet Joel but now let's look at, go back as I promised and look at the coming of the Spirit. Early in the chapter, in verse 2, we, we see that they had come together in one place. Some people think it was an open uh, upper room in some part of the temple. But they were together in one place like Jesus had asked them to do before he left. And certain, suddenly there came from heaven of noise like a violent rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and there appeared to them tongues of fire distributing themselves like they rested on each one of them similar to what Sarah had cut out for us and we're going to make the flames together tongues of fire and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance and now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under the heavens. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. So we see God's timing. When this happened, we can think back to the idea of Shabbat and the Festival of Weeks. This was a pilgrimage time for all the Jews in the known world. And so Peter had the opportunity to preach 
to Jews from everywhere because they were all here for the festival of weeks. And so Peter has this opportunity and we see there were people from all over, from Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia and Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs. And we hear them speaking in our own tongues, speaking of the mighty deeds of God. The reason for the tongues was so the believers and those gathered in the upper room could do what they had been commanded, to witness to the glory and the things of Jesus Christ. And the reason for this was so everybody could hear those messages and then Peter's sermon in their own language. Now, I would just add this. There are people who call themselves Pentecostal denominations, like we are Advent Christians because we uh, emphasize the second coming or the second advent of Christ. And people that are of Pentecostal denominations identify with the day of Pentecost. And that's fine and that's important. But I would say to you, however, that the day of Pentecost and what happened here isn't about the gift of tongues. All people, the scriptures tell us all people are filled in verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. And the reason for this was so they could understand the gospel that was being preached. And Jesus had said in Acts 1-5 that all will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I would all say to you, say also to you that not only are we all filled with the Spirit when we come to know Jesus as our Savior, but we've been, been entrusted with a mission to witness. And also, if you look at that video about Babel, you'll see that the Church of Jesus Christ has been entrusted with overcoming the effects that Babel left on our world. And we still see those effects with all the hatred in our world today and all the bad things that are going on. Hopefully, as our local church and as the Church of Christ in our world, we will be more faithful and more effective in reversing the curse and overcoming the curse of Babel. I'd like to just touch on Peter's sermon as we conclude were actually four parts to Peter's sermon. The first we've already looked at is in verses 14 through 21. Peter talks about the prophecy of Joel. So he gets his audience's attention, a Jewish audience, by talking about the prophet Joel, one of their Old Testament prophets. And then he turns in verse 22 to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Most of these people maybe had heard the story of Jesus being crucified and being raised from the dead, but maybe they hadn't heard from Peter yet or they didn't know the full story. So Peter addresses them beginning in verse 22. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders, all that Jesus performed himself in the midst of you. This man was delivered over by the predetermined plan of God and the foreknowledge of God. It was done by evil people, but this was all part of God's plan so Jesus could be our Savior. He was put on a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. But God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death. Jesus' death and resurrection puts an end to the agony of death. For David says of him, now Peter turns back 
to the greatest king in the history of Israel and somebody that all the Jewish people would have admired. And Peter goes on to say, For David says of him, I saw the Lord always in my presence, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue exalted. Moreover, my flesh also live in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to under, undergo decay. You have made known to me the ways of life. You have made me full of gladness with your presence. Brethren, Peter says to them, I may confidently say to you regarding the patriarch David that he died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. And so because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath to seat one of his descendants on the throne, he looked ahead. David looked far ahead and he spoke of the resurrection of Christ that he was neither, neither abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer decay. And then Peter turns back to Jesus, and he says to them in testifying and giving witness to Christ, this Jesus God raised up again, to which we are all witnesses. It's known for sure that Jesus was raised from the dead and having been exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured forth this, this which you both see and hear. Peter alludes to the ascension, which happened ten days earlier, and now he goes back to talking about what just happened. He has poured forth this which you both see and hear, for it wasn't David who ascended unto heaven, but it was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord has said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Psalm 110 verse one. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, Peter concludes his message and my message. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Peter gave it his best shot, and Peter testified to all those Jewish people who were there for the festival of weeks and for the day of Pentecost about who Jesus is, what he accomplished, and what he's now doing for us at the right hand of God. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen.